Real quick before I start, I have a sore throat too. If I sound weird, please bear with me. Okay, let's do this one more time. My name is Nagi and for the past 6 years, I've been making games. Let's cut to the chase. In a new empty project, I'm gonna open up the project settings, physics, 3D and change the value for gravity. I don't like the default value so I double it to make it feel a bit more realistic. Next, I'm gonna go to the input map and add some actions for the FPS controller. I'll add the forward, backward, left and right actions and set them to W, S, A and D keys respectively. I'll also add the jump and crouch actions and set them to spacebar and control. With the setup done, let's create the player. I'll create a new scene and add a character body 3D as the root. Then I'll add a collision shape 3D and set its shape to be a capsule with the radius set to 1, the height to 4 and the position along the Y axis set to 2. I'll add a node 3D, rename it to head and add a camera to it. Set the position of the head where you'd like it to be. For me, I set it to 3 units along the Y axis. With that, we can move to writing the code. Select the root node of the player and click on the attach script icon up here. Rename the script to your liking. Oh, and remember, we'll have to write a lot of code so play close attention. Oh. Godot 4 introduced new code templates which set a lot of the movement code already. Which makes my job hard because if everything is already done, what do I have to teach now? Let's start with changing the speed and jump constants to export variables so that we can change them easily from the inspector. I'll also rename the variables to lowercase since they're not constants anymore and I like to follow good coding practices. Next, I'll change all the input actions in the script to the ones we just created. Then let's refactor the gravity and jump code so that we can include the crouching code later on in the video. Now let's test out the code. I'll save the player scene in its own folder and open up the demo scene that I definitely did not recycle from my last tutorial. I'll instantiate the player scene in this one using the instantiate button. The cool thing about instantiating a scene in another is that you can not only have multiple instances of it in the same scene, but also if you update the original scene, the changes reflect everywhere. Anyway, let's run the game using the F5 key or the play button up here. I'll select the demo room as my main scene and there you go. The player can move and jump using the keys we set in the input map. Quite stiff though. Let's fix that. I'll start with adding an export variable for the acceleration and set it to 16. Down in the code where we set the velocity, let's lerp the current value to the desired value moving acceleration times delta. While we're at it, let's change the stopping code to use the acceleration value as well. Now, the player not only moves more smoothly, but you can control the amount of acceleration right from the inspector. Looking at the same direction while moving is kinda jarring though, so let's add some camera rotation. I'll start with including a reference to the head in the script and define a variable to show the look rotation. In the ready function, I'll set the mouse mode to capture so the mouse doesn't run to the edges of the screen when looking around. Then in the input function, I'll check if the input event is of the type input event mouse motion and subtract the input's relative x from the rotation's y and the input's relative y from the rotation's x. I love making these animations. Next, at the end of the physics process function, I'll set the head's x rotation to the look rotation's x and the character body's y rotation to the look rotation's y. The reason I don't set the rotation of both the axes to the character body is because we don't want this or this or this. God, get this off the screen. Anyway, you should have a perfectly working camera control. Wait, that's not right. I'm going to define some more export variables for the camera sensitivity set to 0.5, the minimum angle of the camera's rotation set to negative 80 and the maximum angle set to 90. Then in the input function, I'll multiply the relative values with the sensitivity and after that clamp the x rotation between the minimum and the maximum angles. With that, we're done with the camera rotation. Hold on, what was that? If only there was a way to go inside. So here's what we're gonna do. While crouching, we'll not only make the head's position lower along the y axis but also shrink the size of the collision shape so the player can crawl through tiny spaces. For that, let's define some more export variables. The first would be the height we want the player to be when crouching. I'll set it to 2. The next variable defines how fast the player would change between standing and the crouching positions. Let's include a reference to the collision shape and define a variable to store the standing height of the player. I'll set its value in the ready function to the collision shape's height. Down after the input function, I'll define a function crouch with a parameter reverse set to false. This value will be used to shift between the standing and the crouching positions. In the function, I'll define a variable target height which will be the crouching height if we are not reversing, otherwise it will have the value of standing height. Then the function will set the collision shape's height to the target height and its position to half of the target height. Lastly, I'll set the head's position along the y axis to the target height minus 1. Running the game now, the player crouches, sure. 
but there is no game juice. Remember that crouch transition value we defined earlier? Let's use that. Back in the crouch function, let's define another parameter delta and lower up all the values to their target values using crouch transition times delta as a weight. Don't forget to pass the delta value from the fitx process function. Now, even if crouching seems to be working fine, there's still one issue. Under the slope, if I release the crouch button, the player slides until it reaches its standing height. And in the vent, oh well. To fix it, we'll use a shape cast node. It's like a recast with 3D. It'll be casting the shape to the top of the player's collision shape to check if it's colliding with anything when the player wants to stand. I'll add a shape cast node to the player's root and rename it to top cast. Remember, it's good practice to name your nodes according to their function. I'll set the shape to a sphere with a radius 0.9 so it doesn't collide when the player is standing. I'll set the target along the Y to 1 and the position along Y to 2. Coming back to the code, I'll add a reference to the shape cast and add a check for the crouching code. With that, even if the button is released, the player will remain crouched until there is enough space above to stand. Neat! Now, to finish the mechanic, let's make the player walk slower when crouched. I'll start with defining an export variable for the crouch speed set to 4. At the start of the physics process function, I'll define a variable move speed and set it to the walk speed by default. But inside the crouch condition, I'll set it to crouch speed. Don't forget to replace the old speed variable with the new one down below. Now, the player can crouch and crawl slowly to... This video's sponsor! Which, which is me. Yeah, I don't earn anything from the channel really. You can help me though. Just like and subscribe. Okay, okay. With that, we have a complete FPS controller that can walk, look around, jump, and crouch. I hope you learned something from- Wait, what's that? Oh no, not the moving blood- <laughs> Back in the early good old 3 days, getting the player to stick to moving platforms was a pain in the bahuki. Let's see how that's improved in good old 4. Oh. It works out of the box. One neat thing you can do before applying the player rotation is to get the rotation of the platform and add it to the look rotation's y value. Now, if the player stands on the platform, this happens. Thanks to Bezos Star for the tip. I've been holding out on trying Godot 4 for a while, but honestly, the more I use it, I find it so much more intuitive and fun to work with. I mean, sure, there are some tiny issues I have with it, but I'm really impressed with its 3D capabilities. So, expect some more Godot 4 tutorials in the future. That will be it for this video. I hope you learned something from it. As always, feel free to reach out in the comments or my socials if you have any questions, doubts or suggestions. Okay, I gotta get off this platform before I woo-